the world is a very different place than it was when you and I grew up. Today, 48 million children use the internet, and nearly 30% say if their parents knew what they were doing online, they would disapprove. Today's children have a portal to the world, and the world has a portal to them that can put them at increased risk. Kids text message as though it were an Olympic event. They upload, download, and move files with an ease that often marvels parents and teachers. But progress comes with a price, and that price is the potential safety of our children. Incidents of cyberbullying, online predators, and identity theft seem to rise each and every year. Schools like Bethlehem's Nichman Middle School aren't waiting for kids to fall victim to cyber threats. They're eliminating and improving safety measures and instilling a philosophy of responsible online behavior right now. Tempo in Depth's Grover Silcox tells us more. The school bully used to lurk in the schoolyard. Today, he or she might just as likely hide behind the internet, targeting or bashing the next victim. Let's talk about some ways of being safe on the internet. Brian Brzezinski teaches technology to these Nichman Middle School 8th graders. You never know how what you say might affect another person. Today, Brian discusses cyberbullying, which can strike via nasty, threatening, or inappropriate emails, text messages, photos, and postings. It can result in serious harm to the victim and legal consequences for perpetrators. The students listen intently. They are aware of how it can be considered harassment. They understand the concept of harassment. They've been um, schooled on that. Nichman implemented an anti-bullying program this year called Levaeus, which addresses bullying, including that done online. The focus of the program is we, we work with the kids in class meetings with our homerooms. With social networking sites like Facebook and MySpace, with smartphones, laptops, and iPods that connect to the internet, with Skyping and instant messaging, Kids have a wealth of wonderful opportunities, but they also face a plethora of potential dangers. Cyberbullying and nasty emails represent only a portion of the dangers. Predators may try to lure them in. Hackers can take their identities, and viruses can ruin their computers. Students have access to the World Wide Web, and they use it. Parents may or may not be aware of how much they're using it or how much access they have to everything that is on the Internet. Assistant Principal Tim Lynch speaks about how the school regulates that access. If the children try to get on sites that are not allowed, they'll come up with access denied. And we also have programs where we can monitor every laptop in our building. We can bring up screenshots to see exactly where all students are. On our laptops, like they have restricted sites that we can't go on. And they have like the sites I use for research mostly that we are allowed. Schools often serve as the unofficial partners of parents in this effort to protect children from online bullying, predators, and other cyber threats. Rebecca Escott regulates the online activities of her three children, including those of her oldest child, Paula, a seventh grader at Nichman. She has her own email account, but we have her password, and um, the younger ones don't have that. The younger ones, all their emails come to us. So. Shelly and Jack Redding of Hellertown also impose rules on cyber usage by their three children. My oldest was not allowed to have Facebook until he was a freshman in high school. And my daughter, who's only in eighth grade and 13, um, was allowed to have a Facebook this year. Facebook members can put all kinds of personal information on their site. Who sees it depends on who the member friends. Once you accept someone requesting to be your friend, that person can potentially see anything you post. I usually don't accept them unless like I know them personally. So I, I really only accept people I know. You should only be conversing or you know sharing information with people that you already know. And again, I think that just needs to be repeated and repeated. And it is throughout schools like Nichman. So the first level of defense would be just block the person. You don't know who they are. You're unfamiliar with them. They're not one of your friends. You block them right off the bat. It's good. Crime prevention officer Tom DeFrank of the Bethlehem Police Department speaks to young people about online threats and dangers. They may be sending a picture of themselves to somebody else and not realizing that pictures can be altered with certain software and that once you get a picture out there or once you send a message to somebody, it's not like you can just take that message back. Kids can even become victims of identity theft online. All the things that can happen from person to person, face to face, now can happen over miles and miles away because of the internet. We had an episode where my son was thinking he was going on a, a site that was a legal site 
and it turned out to be a fraudulent site. Although schools and parents and law enforcement continue working together to keep kids safe online, they still agree that the most effective weapon is relationship building. What are you doing, Quinn? Just checking my Skyhawk schedule. If parents get involved and work with their children so that they understand the benefits and the hazards of being online, that will help them to avoid getting into situations that they're not able to handle. No matter what rules we set, there are ways around things. So I realized that I have to talk to them, there has to be an open line of communication, and it has to be repetitive. Nichman principal Jacqueline Santanasto mirrors the hope and concern shared by parents and teachers everywhere. The internet is here to stay, and technology is just continually advancing, and as it becomes smarter and smaller and faster, it's in our students' hands. And like we would teach them to use anything, any tool, or any of the things that they learn to use it properly. And that's what dedicated teachers and wise parents hope to achieve as they prepare children to surf safely. For Tempo In Depth, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thanks so much.